Hey, so today's lecture is gonna be pretty quick. We're gonna cover the syntax of our loops in Python, and that's gonna be pretty much it. So this is how a while loop would look like in Python. So the syntax goes a keyword while, then we put our condition, then we put a semicolon, and then whatever we want the code to do with an indentation. The format is similar to the if statements, the decision structures, same idea, just instead of it being a single decision, we have a loop now. And let's look at this example right here. So we have a count variable that we've created and we equaled it to zero, right? Then we have our while. So this loop will continue executing until count reaches five. Okay, so how this is gonna look like? We have a count at zero, so while count is less than five, we check if our count is less than five. Yes, it is at zero, so it is less than five. So this code will execute now. We're gonna print hello, but then we're gonna increment our count variable. So now instead of the count being zero, our count variable is one because we assigned it a new variable. Count equals count plus one. So we'll go through this loop again. While count is less than five, what's our count variable now? It's at one. So it's still less than five. We're still going to print hello. And we're going to keep going until our count equals four. So let's go through this loop while our count equals four. While count less than five, our count equals four. We're going to print hello. But then, since we're going to increment the count, our count equals to five now. Then we go back again and we look at our loop and our condition while count is less than five. Well, our count is not less than five anymore because it is five. And this condition, the count less than five, it's not inclusive. It does not include five. If it would be including five, it would be count equals or less than five. Okay? So hello will be printed only up until our count equals five. After that, hello will not be printed anymore. So when it comes to a for loop, it doesn't really work the same way as in any other languages. So the for loop in Python is made to go through a sequence of data items. And what it means is just we have these different data types, such as arrays and lists, and it's just uh, different variables that are arranged in the list. OK, so what the for loop does it executes, it iterates once for each item in the sequence. So for example, if we had a list with, for example, like 10 items in the list, right? Our for loop would go through each of those 10 pieces in the list, 10 items in the list. Okay. It's, it's, it's not complicated. It's just this little quirk of this language. So this is how it would look like. We created an arbitrary list that iterates from one to five, right? One, two, three, four, five. And then we said for each number in our list, print that number. So what this code will do, let me click my pen. So what this code will do is just going to print for each number in this sequence, because num stands for number in this sequence, print that number. So at first, this number will be assigned one. So we're going to print one. Then we're hopping on to the next one. This will be announced. We're going to print number two. Then we're going to the next one. We're going to print number three. Then we're going to print number four. And then we're going to finish the list and we're going to print number five. Excuse me. Also, when we're using a for loop in Python, this is what we can do. We can use a function called range. OK, so what this means, it does the same thing as here for a number in a sequence, but it starts from zero. The range, by default, it starts from zero. So for each number in a range from numbers zero to five, print number. And what it does, it is the same thing as this one does. But the one thing is that we do not include the last number. So as you can see, five is not included here. This is exactly what happens. We go through numbers in range from zero to five, not including the five. 
However, if you want to start your range from some other number, you can totally do that. You just have to specify the first number that you specify in the range function, the first argument that you're passing, is going to be the starting value. Okay, so for example, if you wanted to do num in range from for each number in range of like from two to four, all you would have to do is switch this number to two and this switch number to four. That's it. But you have to remember that this number will not be included at the end. The first one, that's where we start, it's always included. This is not going to be included. So if in this situation, our loop would run for two and three only. It would not run for number four. If you would like your range to be incremented by a certain amount of numbers, a certain amount of um, value, you can specify that. That's the third argument that you pass to the range function. See, right here. So what we have here, let's look at this loop. For each number in range from 1 to 12, not including, right? But increment by 2. So this is what the code will display. And just print all of these numbers. This is what the code will display. 1. Then instead of going to 2, since our stepping stone is 2, we're going to have 1 plus 2 will equal 3. Then 3 plus 2 will equal 5, and so on and so on. Instead of adding 1, we're just going to add 2. Simple. And this number can be anything. You can specify any number that you want. You can do 4, 5, 6. You can, yeah, whatever number you want. So if we had this, instead of 2, if we had 3, this is what it would look like. 1 plus 3, 4, plus 3, 7, plus 3, 10, then plus 3, we would not get to 12, because it's over, it would be 13. So this is what our list would look like. Alright, that's all I had for today, hope you enjoyed.